It's a beautiful day out. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling creative. So it's the perfect day to create some wall art. Hope you're doing well. Today we are going to practice our creativity and create some budget-friendly large wall art. I love art. It's very personal. It can be very inspiring. It can do a lot for our spaces as well. Now art of course is very personal and I definitely believe in supporting your local artists if you can, but I know that can sometimes be out of our budget. So today we are gonna do our own. Hopefully with today's two to three projects, depending on how much time I have, you'll take away some inspiration, some ideas or entertainment. Either way, let's get into today's video. For this project, I'm gonna be painting over this art piece right here. Now, before I hear it in the comments, this was my painting. I painted this a few years ago. I think it was for my college apartment. In fact, it was for my college apartment, which don't ask me what the design style there was. I am just no longer a fan of this and I am okay painting over this. I know for some people that might be an issue. If you wanna get some large canvases, maybe you can go to your local um, some art supply store use the coupons or sales that they might have i've also seen them at retailers like Nick ross i've seen large blank canvases that are affordable or head to your thrift stores and get some old paintings um, you don't have to get the original pieces maybe you can paint over those like printed ones if you feel more comfortable but just a couple ways to get large canvases for a budget i even made this frame for it but i'm not a fan of it it's too rustic we're going to create another sort of floating frame which i'll show you how to do i want to keep it simple for this piece we're just going to really play on texture maybe do like a black and white moment some contrast and a nice modern frame All right, the first thing I did is I removed the old frame. Now I'm gonna tape around the border of the canvas to kind of to create a modern look as you'll see in the end, just using some painter's tape or masking tape, I should say. Okay, to create some texture, I'm gonna be using joint compound. Joint compound is normally used on gypsum wallboard or drywall, you might know it as. And it's kind of, this one comes already, um, mixed although you might want to mix it with like a paint stick or something it's kind of like a mud consistency and this stuff will create some texture on the canvas we're going to use a trowel tray i guess and these trowels as long as they are flat doesn't matter if they're plastic or metal i'd prefer the plastic ones but uh, of course, I will link everything that I can below for you. I even saw at the hardware store, like a kit that has everything. Um, I'll see if I can find that for you. First things up, let's go ahead and pile on this joint compound onto the canvas. We're gonna spread as much as we can. We're gonna come back and remove some of it with a technique, but I'm just taking my spackling knife and really getting it on there and trying to work as fast as I can because I don't want this to dry, but ultimately that will depend on the temperature. Now I'm gonna use this notch trowel right here. This is typically used for laying tile to set up, um, but here I'm gonna use it to create that texture. Look at that, that is very satisfying. I've done this a couple of times before. Maybe you've seen some videos. This literally is kind of just therapeutic, kind of like a Zen garden almost. Just create those nice lines. You can create curves, you can get straight lines. Creating the straight lines is actually a little bit hard. It just depends on your hand coordination, which I kind of struggled here. I kind of had to do it a couple of times. That's okay. If you messed up, you can just apply more joint compound over it and just try it again. Seriously, it takes a couple of tries. But honestly, I kind of like the organic look to it. Yes, they're kind of just simple modern lines, but there's also an organic nature to it once you see the imperfections, which I'm okay with. Honestly, the possibilities are endless with the shapes that you can create, but ultimately decided to go with sort of two trapezoids, as you will see here shortly. Before I let that joint compound dry and removing all of the tape, making sure that everything's nice and clean, then just cleaning up with a wet paper, wait, <laughs> wet paper towel. I'm just cleaning up the edges. Now, with this stuff, I'm just giving it a quick rinse outside. You do not want to rinse this in the sink, I think, but let's just wait overnight. Good morning. So it's the following morning. Everything has dried. 
pretty much fully. Um, it feels very nice touching it. The texture feels good. So I'm going to go ahead and paint it. When you use joint compound, they say you should use primer. Um, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to paint over it and hope for the best. I've done it before and it, it's fine. So let's paint over this and kind of bring that texture forward and create a little bit of depth as well. Dang, Jorge, back at it again with the masking tape. So I'm going to put the masking tape back on there because I'm going to paint these two sections different colors. You'll see here shortly. First, we're going to paint the center, the textured part. We're going to paint it two tones. So first, we're going to give it some depth. So we're going to paint it black. Added a little bit of yellow to give it some warm undertones. And just paint the entire canvas. Again, making sure that the joint compound has fully dried overnight. To be honest, I was in a time crunch on creating this art, but no worries. I whipped out the good old hair dryer to save some time. Now that that's dry, let's bring this to life. So for the top coat, we're going to go in with sort of a warm tone gray, I guess. At first, I was going to go for some brown. So I was mixing some colors around and then I didn't like that. So I don't know. This is the result here. <laughs> just gray, whatever. Um, so I'm just going to use this foam roller to go over the texture. What this is going to do is it's only going to paint the surface. It's not going to get into the little grooves because again, we want to create that depth, that dimension. It's okay if it's not perfect. In fact, I prefer the imperfections that you will see. I don't know. It kind of brings this painting. You can see the handmade quality of it, I guess. Um, and I think it's very satisfying. It's looking pretty good. Now I want to paint the border. I kind of want to do a muted color since this is pretty monochromatic right now. I'm thinking maybe like a brownish green. Let's see what that looks like. If we're being honest, I just threw a whole bunch of paint together and hope for the best. I also use this matte medium. What this stuff does is it gives your acrylic paint more of a matte sheen rather than a glossy sheen, which I prefer, especially for this perimeter that I'm painting on the canvas. Just to give it sort of a clean streamlined look. In the end, I ended up going with sort of this like brownish green color, as you will see. But that does it for the painting part. Also bought some new brushes. What a good day. Um, I'll try to link everything that I can below for you, but just enjoy this portion of the painting. Ooh, since we're already here, let me give a quick plug about my website, casarefine.com, where you can find more home decor content for free. That's right, free, including uh, bonus DIYs, vintage shopping with me, thrift hauls, um, home decor finds that I find online, like dupes for uh, high-end items for less, and all sorts of great things uh, within my blog post. I'll have some videos as well. So go check it out. It's free. While you're there, sign up for my newsletter because I like to give sneak peeks of what's coming up on my videos or just other things, maybe a little bit more personal things, what have you. So go check it out. I'll put everything linked down below. I'm going to create a fake floating frame. Honestly, I still haven't mastered the floating frames, so I'm not going to really explain it to you. There's a lot of great YouTube videos that share how to make a floating frame, but basically I'm going to use some of this uh, hardboard that I cut into little strips that's going to create that fake gap, spray painting the edges black. Then I'm cutting it down to the size of the canvas. Then I'm going to use my bread nailer and just nail it down to there. <music> I don't like nailing directly to canvases, but it's okay. I think the world will keep going. Now for the actual trim or for the frame, the wooden frame, I actually like to use this. I get this from Lowe's or Home Depot. Basically this is just like a wood paneling or wood molding. And I like to just miter it to the right size here. I'm gonna glue it down with some Gorilla Glue and some Elmer's glue because I don't, I can't decide between the two. Glue it down and just clamp it with some clamps, obviously and just let it do its thing. 
and move on to the next site and so on and so on. But that, that's it for this project. Again, I'm so sorry about the explanation for the wooden floating frame. I'm still trying to figure out. I think I have a blog post on it. I'll link it below because I think it's more helpful than this. What are your thoughts on these birds? Check out these birds. <laughs> um, these birds are chilling, but they're not gonna chill in this house because I'm going to paint over them. So this is actually just like a generic art print from like Home Goods or Ross or so, one of those places, which by the way, you can get framed art there that you can paint over if you don't love it. We're gonna paint over this because it's just not the vibe. Check it out the little canvases. So I think this is like nine smaller canvases mounted onto this larger one. We're gonna paint over it, kind of create a nice, maybe colorful vignette. I'm not sure, we'll see where this takes us. And maybe even do a floating frame for it. Okay, this one's a little bit out of order, but I was just trying to take advantage of the sunlight. I started off with making the frame and just cutting that down to the right size. I'm not gonna make this one a floating frame. I'm just going to attach it to the canvas as is, but we'll get to that in a second. First of all, let's go ahead and paint our artwork. All right, let's get this party started and paint our canvas. I'm going to use some leftover lime wash paint from my bathroom, but I do have to use an acrylic base primer first. So I'm giving it two coats, of course, letting each coat dry before moving on to the next. I'm gonna miss the little birds, but it's okay, I'll get over it. Now for the lime wash, I'm using Sydney Harbors in Inferno, no, Interno, <laughs> Lime Wash. This is some great lime paint that I have used in my bathroom. If you haven't used Lime Wash paint, and I think they sell like the smaller, like pint sizes, basically it's not like paint where you wanna try to get it perfect. You kinda just, it's kind of like it's, I don't know, there's a lot of videos out there, but basically just kind of go in cloud-like motions and not be perfect. That's what I did there. Now, like I said, this video is a little bit out of order, um, but taking advantage of the sunlight, once that dried, I took it outside and just uh, brad nailed the frame on there. Now, since that happens, I do have to go in with some wood filler and fill in sort of the edges and the holes that I created. Once that dries, I can go in and sand that and it kind of disappears. For the individual canvas squares, I kind of challenged myself and not think about what I was going to paint and just go for it. So I ended up going with three colors, basically black, white, green, and uh, red, and basically just painted each square individually. And this is what I came up with. Just enjoy. Honestly, that's the great thing about art. Just let it take you in the direction it's going to take you and just trust the process. Get inspired. Oh, and by the way, once I finish painting, I always like to go in with a UV matte sealer just to help protect the artwork. I didn't show it here on video, but I will link it down below. Also, I'm still unsure of what directions to take the frame. Should I stain it or should I leave it that natural tone? Comment down below. All right, I think we did what we came here to do. We made some art, we got creative. I definitely wanna do a couple more, so be on the lookout for another video, but let me know which one was your favorite. I was just, just curious to know what people gravitate towards. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Check out my other DIY videos. I love the DIY, I'm here for it, as well as my other videos. So thank you so much for watching. Have an amazing day, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.